Recently, I've gotten multiple comments of people saying that they think I'm AI. I'm a real person, but I did figure it was about time I actually made a video on Copilot Studio, speaking of AI. Specifically today, I want to show you how to kind of use a SharePoint list as a knowledge source for your agent. Another prominent Power Platform YouTuber, shout out to Shane Young, actually recently made a similar video on how to do something like this. But the thing I love about the Power Platform is that there are always multiple ways to approach the same problem. Sometimes using the native Git action in your Copilot Studio is the way to go, and it works perfectly in Shane's video. But sometimes there might be a use case where you want to do it a little bit differently, and I'll explain why. I have a bunch of tabs open on my screen. These are all going to be relevant. We are going to be using quite a bit of Power Automate to kind of get this to work today. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I've pre-set up for you. I've got a stock advisor bot. And the problem that I'm solving for here today actually comes to us from one of our real customers during our virtual mentoring sessions. I had a virtual mentoring session with a customer last week. And they had a SharePoint list full of a bunch of items and they wanted to be able to use those items as a knowledge source for their bot. But this is why we're doing it this way instead of the native get items action in, in Copilot Studio. They didn't want to give everyone access to that SharePoint list. They wanted to hold onto the SharePoint list and didn't want anyone to have access to it. But some of the columns in there and some of the data they did want people to have access to in the form of a copilot agent. So we actually were able to figure out a way to use Power Automate to extract those items, to put them into a PDF, and then to save that PDF to a document library, which you can use as a knowledge source for your copilot agent. So kind of a workaround, but it really comes in handy when you have some sensitive data that you don't want to give everyone access to. In the overview of my bot, I'm just going to go to my topic here. And I've got a restricted stocks topic. This bot was preset up by me a couple hours before this video. If you want a full video on how to create your own co-pilot agent, definitely check out Amelia Roberts Learn with the Nerds on our channel. It does an excellent job of walking you through how to create a bot. I have some trigger phrases here. If someone asks about restricted stocks or restricted items, I basically want to respond to that user to say, hey, which company are you asking about? And I want to take that user's entire response. Then I want to give them an answer. Basically asking the bot, hey, can I trade this stock? Is this stock a restricted stock? In a lot of organizations that deals with stocks and trading, there may be a list of restricted stocks that they're not allowed to trade or buy because maybe there are some internal conflicts of interest. Maybe that stock is the stock of a customer. So there's always reasons why you might not be able to trade a stock if you work for a certain company. So that's what we're trying to figure out here. If I go in to my bot, I'm just going to preview this. I'm going to say stocks. It's going to say, great, I can help with that. This is where I'm going to need the copilot agent to use some generative answers and go to the, my knowledge source and figure out if what this person is asking about is a restricted stock. So I'm going to add a step here in my bot. I'm going to go down to advanced and I want to do a generative answer. The input that's coming into this action is going to be my variable called var stock that I set in the step above. And I want this agent to use my data sources as its source of knowledge. So I'm going to go in and edit this and you'll see I don't have any knowledge sources yet. So I'm going to click add knowledge. There's a few different ways to add knowledge sources. We can do public websites, we can do SharePoint, and we can do Dataverse. There are also some other options here. If you go to advanced, none of them are SharePoint lists. What is this SharePoint option? We can actually point to document libraries and folders within SharePoint. There's one caveat to this though. If we look at the documentation for Copilot, you're gonna notice that it's kind of restrictive on the types of files you can actually use in those SharePoint document libraries. So they have to be either PDFs, PowerPoints, or Word docs. So we're gonna come back to that. In this use case, I'm going to point to a document library in a SharePoint site that everyone at Pragmatic Works has access to. That's our training SharePoint. You'll see I've created a copilot knowledge demo folder. And within that folder, I have a subfolder called restricted stocks. I wanted to use the items in this folder as its source of knowledge. So the files within this folder, they're going to have to be PDFs or Word documents or PowerPoints. So I'm going to say, that's my knowledge source, confirm selection. Again, everyone at Pragmatic Works has access to that SharePoint site. So when they authenticate in and use the spot, they'll be able to read data sources in that folder. But I have my own SharePoint site somewhere else that not everyone has access to, and I don't want to give everyone access to it. That's my Nate Demos site. In Nate Demos, 
you'll see that I have a list called restricted items. And I have a few sample stocks in here, Apple, Microsoft, XYZ Corp. I have their ticker symbols. I have the reason that these stocks are restricted. So now I wanna somehow transfer these items from this list that no one has access to over to a SharePoint site where everyone has access to them, but I need to put it in a format that Copilot can use as knowledge. So that's the crux of the problem here. Let's dive in and figure out how we're gonna solve it. I'm just gonna do this in my personal productivity environment and I'm gonna create a flow. I could do a scheduled flow. I could run this every single day. I could run it every six hours. I could run an instant flow anytime an item is added to the restricted items list. I could have it run this flow. Let's just do a scheduled flow for the purposes of demonstration here. I'll call this restricted items refresh. And I'm gonna repeat this every day. In my flow, the first thing I wanna do is I don't wanna overwhelm my Copilot agent with hundreds of documents I want to go in to the folder that currently has the restricted stocks and whatever file is there, I want to delete it. So I'm going to do the get files action in SharePoint. I'm going to point to the site where that document library is. I'm going to point to the root folder, which is documents. And then I want to limit entries to a specific folder. Here's my restricted stocks folder, and I only want to grab the files from within there. The next thing I'm going to do, since I don't, I want to make sure I don't delete all the files on this site, I want to make sure I've set up this get files step correctly. I'm going to do a quick compose action just to count how many items did I get. To do that, I'm going to use an expression. I'm going to say, give me the length of the value that got returned from the get file step. This will tell me how many files it's about to delete. Right now you'll see I have zero files in this folder. So let me run this flow and make sure that that says zero before I say, all right, go and delete all those. And you'll see the outputs of my compose step. I have zero files, perfect. So I'm gonna go in and edit my flow. I can delete this step. I'm going to say delete file, point to my SharePoint site, and for my file identifier, I have some dynamic content, I'm going to search for the identifier, and that's going to automatically go into an apply to each or a for each loop. For each file that I found in that subfolder, delete that file. So at any given time, I really should only have one file in my restricted items knowledge source. Next, I'm going to get all of the items from my SharePoint site that no one else has access to. So I'm going to get items. This time I'm going to use my Nate demo site and the list is going to be restricted items. Now I only have a few items in this list. I don't necessarily need to do any filtering and I don't need to turn on pagination. But if I did have hundreds or thousands of records, you may want to go into settings and turn on pagination so that Power Automate can find all of those records. And additionally, it's always best practice to add some filtering to ignore the records that you don't care about in that SharePoint list. For today's demo purpose, we're gonna care about all of them. Before I go to this next step, I wanna tell you what I'm trying to do here. I have a Word template, a Microsoft Word template, and I wanna take all the items and I wanna stick them into that Word template. First, let me show you what that Word template looks like. You can see I have just some simple text here. The following stocks are on the restricted list. I'm kind of like giving some prompts in this document to Copilot so that it can better generate answers. And in this template, it's just a small four column table with the name, the ticker, the reason that it's restricted and the date that it was restricted. So this is a great way if you have columns that you don't want people to see, or if you have rows that you don't want people to see. Again, I have these items in a SharePoint list that no one has access to, and I'm picking and choosing only the columns that I want to bring over. So if you had sensitive salary data or commission data that you didn't want to give everyone access to, this is a great solution for that. This control in the Word template is what's called a repeating section. It's basically a table. The name of this table you can see is called restricted items. If you're interested in learning how I built this Word template, make sure you check out our YouTube video where I show exactly how to take tables from somewhere and put them into a repeating section. The link will be in the description for this video. Here's a very simple word template, very simple array with just four columns. 
you can see I have a column called name. I have a column called ticker, reason, and date are all of the repeating controls in this table. Back to my flow, I need to take this array that came back from get items. It's going to return all those items in a JSON array. And I'm going to do a select operation. A select operation will allow you to take an array and kind of create your own custom array out of that. So I want to select from the outputs of get items. This is my JSON array of all the items that it found in the restricted items list. And I'm going to start building my array to match exactly what my word template is expecting. So I have a column called name. I have a column called ticker reason. And lastly, I have a column called date from get items in the name. I want to put the title of this record. You can see in SharePoint, the title has the name of the company. In the ticker column from my dynamic content, I want to put the ticker from SharePoint. The reason is a choice column in SharePoint. Reason, restricted reason is the name of the column. And then within that, if I just want the text, I have to use restricted reason value. And then the date for today's purpose, I'll just use the date that this item was created in SharePoint. Now that I've got my array built, let's go ahead and actually take a look at what this is going to look like. So I'm going to save this. Are you sure you want to do this? You don't have an OData filter on your get items action. I'm totally okay with that for today. So I'm going to manually run this. You see my flow ran successfully. And let's look at the outputs of select. So you can see I have a nice JSON array here with the name, the ticker, the reason, and the date. The date looks a little funky because in SharePoint, this is using the date and time. So I probably want to format that to use maybe just the date. So I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna edit this flow, and instead of using the created date, I'm gonna do an expression. I wanna format that date. So format date time, which date do I wanna format? I'm gonna use my dynamic content and use the created field. The next parameter of this formula is I can just put in single quotes how I want this date to look. Maybe the month, then the date, then the year. Now that I have that array built, I want to populate my word template. So I want to take that array and put it in the word template. Populate a word template. First, I have to tell Power Automate where that template lives. So that's in my OneDrive. And then the file that I want to use is in my documents. And if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see the restricted items template. So once I put my action in here, populate a word template, and I tell it which template I want to use. I'm going to go to the advanced parameters here, and you'll see my array called restricted items. This is asking for me to add in some items. I can either hit add new item and I can fill out one by one. There's the name, there's the ticker, there's the reason. But I already have the array built exactly how I need it with this select statement. So I'm going to hit this button right here to switch to the array mode. I'm going to get rid of all of this empty JSON here. And I just want to pass in the outputs of my select statement because the way I built my select statement has the exact same schema that this word template is waiting for. Now that I've populated that template, I'm going to need to convert it to a PDF. Let me just save you some time here. I don't want to make this video 30 minutes long. It says that a DOCX, a DOCX, a Word document can be a file that's in a knowledge source with SharePoint. But Word templates behave a little bit differently. They are actually XML under the hoods and Copilot cannot read the data in those Word templates. I'm going to need to convert what I just populated to a PDF. But before I can do that, I need to save that file somewhere so that I can actually convert it. So I'm just going to quickly create a file. I'm going to do this in OneDrive. The reason I'm doing this in OneDrive is because OneDrive has a convert file action and SharePoint does not. So I'm going to create the file in OneDrive. I'm just going to save this to my documents. If you have a better place to save it, again, great. But this is just going to be a temporary file that we store so that we can then convert it. So I'm going to put this in the documents. I'm going to call this restricted items temporary dot docx. I need to tell it that this is going to be a Word document. The contents of that file is going to be the outputs from when I populated that Word template in the step above. Now I need to convert 
that Word document that I just created into a PDF so that Copilot can use it as a source of knowledge. So I'm going to use the convert file action in OneDrive. The file, it's asking for an ID here. So I'm going to use the ID from the outputs of the create file step up above. The target type is I want it to convert this to a PDF. Now, as a last step, I then want to create a file in SharePoint. This time I want to do this in the site that everyone has access to. So I'm going to put this in the training site. I'm going to find my folder. Copilot Knowledge Demo. And then within there, I have this Restricted Stocks folder. The name of the file is going to be Restricted Stocks.pdf. And the content is going to be the file content from the convert file action up above. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do this, but generally I would go back and delete these files here. So I would add two delete file actions. I would delete the file that I created here and the file that I converted. I'm going to save this and I'm going to give it a test. Before I click run flow, the hope is that it puts a PDF document here that reflects the restricted stocks in this list. So now I'm going to click run flow. It's nice and fast. It took about 11 seconds. We'll go to my SharePoint document library here and you'll see we have restricted stocks. If I open up this file, you can see we've got all of our restricted stocks here. We've got the date formatted nice and pretty. Perfect. Now we've got that working properly. Let's go back to our Copilot agent. We've added our knowledge source. For this step, when it responds, I want to tell the bot to only use the knowledge sources. And I'm going to tell it, hey, use the restricted stocks as the knowledge source to answer this. I'm also going to say, hey, don't use your own general knowledge here. We want you to stick to the knowledge source that's in our organization. And I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to test this out. I'm going to refresh my agent. I'm considering trading Microsoft. And look at this. Microsoft stock is on the restricted list due to a customer conflict of interest. The restriction date is March 21st, 2025. Gives you the source of knowledge here. The users can click on that. They can see the PDF. They can see all the records that they're supposed to have access to. This is awesome. If I go back to my SharePoint list, Let's test this out, okay? I'm going to make up a totally random company. I don't see ABC Inc. on here at all. So I'm going to go back to my bot. I'm going to say stocks. Great. I'm considering trading ABC Inc. No information. I can configure my agent to respond with something a little more like, yeah, that sounds great. You can go ahead and trade that stock. Let's test this one more time. Let's just make sure this isn't a fluke. So I'm going to go back to my restricted items list that only I have access to. I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to say... I'm just going to put in Disney. The ticker, I don't even know what the ticker is, so maybe this is right, maybe it's not. D-I-S-N. We'll say the reason that this is restricted is we have an internal conflict of interest. Maybe one of our employees works for Disney. I'm going to save that into my restricted items list. Now, I'm going to go back. I'm going to run this flow again. The flow ran successfully. Let's go check our folder. Close out of this existing one. You see it was updated a few seconds ago. Let's click on this restricted stocks. Let me refresh this, open it up. Disney is now on the restricted items list, which is a knowledge source for Copilot. Let's go back and test our bot. Let's see how real time this is. I'm gonna say stock, considering trading Disney. And instantly, the Disney stock is on the restricted list due to an internal conflict of interest. It was restricted on March 26. As you can see, there's multiple ways to tackle the same problem. Sometimes this is gonna be a better use case for you and your data. Sometimes the video that Shane put out is gonna be a better use case for you and your data. Let me know if there's a third way. If you've come up with another cool way to use SharePoint list as a knowledge source, I would love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below. If you're interested in working with us one-on-one -on -one to solve problems like this in real time, definitely check out our virtual mentoring service. It's my favorite service that we offer. It's what I do all day, every day. Again, thank you so much for watching and sticking to the end. I hope you have a great day. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.